Sheikh Nurjan Ermadi, uh, welcome. Uh, 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 it's, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. God bless you and, and your audience. And I'm uh, humbled by the introduction. I'm just a student of the path and, and trying to share from what's been taught to us and what's been inspired within our hearts. Mr. DC and, and Haji Kamran, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you. Uh, it is a, a great honor. And uh, as I was saying earlier, sir, uh, the, the focus of this is uh, the, the paranormal, mysticism, and enlightenment, uh, the search yes, for, for inner peace, uh, to be more uh, keenly aware of uh, the divine, however uh, you may uh, picture it. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I want to give you uh, rain to to say what you will, but if if it's all right, I, I think I will kick off uh, this this session with a with a question, if I could. Sure, we we'll try our best. I, I'm certain you will succeed brilliantly. But uh, here here is the the first question: uh, How would you say are paranormal phenomena related to jinn and the imaginal realm? Uh, are all jinn evil or are some good or neutral? And what order of reality are jinn? Ya Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God most compassionate and, and most merciful, that we are an energy being and there are many dimensions and many creations that nothing is, is empty as they teach us don't waste space, don't waste time, God doesn't waste anything. So that there are many levels of creation and many realities of which we don't understand. The importance is if we lead a physical life and we think only in physical terms and only emphasize on the brain, this life is just one dimensional. It's just its physicality. Mysticism and spirituality, which was the norm and now became the estranged and the less practice, is mysticism was that you had to keep a balance in life. You had to practice your physical practices, discipline the bad characteristics, and then what we would have is tafakkur and contemplation. And every language has a different word for the realization of the soul. There's a light within the heart and our life's duty is to nourish that light and to bring out its reality. And God has given us all like a temporary existence on this earth, like a candle. And if we don't take care of that light, this world by its nature is to blow out that light. And our reality of why we've been sent on this to earth for a physical experience, that we are a spiritual being sent for a physical experience. And the training of Sufism and mysticism is to nourish that light, to protect that light with the good deeds, the spiritual practices of meditation and prayer and selflessness. So those whom are only physical, the world teaches them selfishness, to be selfish, what they want, what they want to take. But God and the Divine, the Divine Energy, by whatever name people want to understand the reality of a higher power, much more powerful than ours, wants us to be selfless. And by selfless deeds and selfless acts, you can bring out the power of your soul. So which that is not no longer just a little candle flickering in the wind because the wind wants to take the light out. This world by its nature wants to take the light of the heart out. By spiritual practices and, and joining spiritual masters because they, they guide you. It's like having a sponsor that if you are in an ocean of difficulty, it's very difficult to lift yourself out of your own difficulty, much of which you can't really even see. The concept of self-help, we don't believe, 
because it's the self that's causing you the problem. What we call the ego, the nafs, the bad desire. Here in the West, we call it the self as a sort of a like an oxymoron. That that's the creature that's bothering you. That's the creature that teams up with every evilness and the self-glorification, the self-gratification, all of that has to be brought down. And so that spiritual training and the, the accompanying of a spiritual master is to bring out these realities of light and these realities of the bad character, identifying it, bringing it down, and then how to bring out the good character with good deeds, good practices, meditations. Once you train in meditations, then what makes the, the shaykhs and the students to be different is they train in the realm of the light. Means they entered into the, the realm of light and they train in it, they understand it. And as a result, there are two senses for everyone. You have hearing that your audience hears with their ears, but you have an inner hearing. Every sense God has given us its two versions. So that what they call an inner ear in medicine is a reality. You have a, a, an inner ear to hear, but do you hear? Hear? Asks that you have ears, but do you really hear? So, yo, yeah, I hear. No, you're just using the physical ear, but you really didn't hear what God wants us to hear. So the inner hearing is when you sit and meditate and to try to connect with your consciousness. The belief is that God didn't give us this light to destroy it. Like, here you go, here's your inheritance and let's see if you can blow it into the world. But he gave us only a small portion of that light that's in the body. The greater light is always in his Divinely Presence. So it's like a spiritual connection, the cable man. You have to connect with yourself. That's why the Prophet taught that who knows himself, he'll know his Lord. He'll even find his Lord if he finds himself. So the journey for God is not outside, it's inside. And I know that your audience likes mu movies and that was the Lord of the Ring. The opening series of Lord of the Ring, they were walking on the mountain which represents the heart. And as Gandalf is walking, they're asking, why are we taking this long road of walking inside? Why don't we go inside? We're walking on the outside. Why don't we go the shortcut and go inside? And as soon as they decided we'll go inside, means that represented a journey to the Lord the Lord of power, that our journey is not finding God on the outside and, and in buildings and in structures, but God is within us. And to go inside, then what was the first thing they saw were the orcs and the demons. As soon as they opened up that cave, there was 700,000 demons coming after you. And that's what the Prophet of Islam taught, that the inner fight is the greatest fight. The jihad means fight and struggle. The struggle against oneself is the most difficult struggle because there's no bounty to collect, there's no money, there's no prosperity in it. It's just the attacking of oneself coming against the bad characteristics. But the demonic and, and negative force is so strong trying to come against the self. That's why it requires to accompany a, a master and a teacher which was the role of Gandalf. Gandalf started off grey because he was also on a path towards reality and at which point he became Gandalf the White when he went through the, the bridge and fought his own demon and he came out from his death as Gandalf the White to guide. So God is marketing. God is marketing to all audiences. It's not just in a mosque that you'll find God but he's marketing to all his creation because he loves them. And through modern media and, and there are some spiritual movies, they have some bad scenes that are maybe not appropriate. But the whole of it and can be understood that these are movies of guidance. And that when you take a guide, all the, the badness that you'll fight and all the demons that you'll fight. And one of those understandings in the realm of light are the unseen, which are, are not unseen for those whom operate with their heart, they're very much seen. And what the Western world doesn't know too much about but what Islam brought a deep ocean of realities were the jinn and the unseen creations of God. And they are created from the oceans of uh, energy like electricity. So for every one of us that God has created, He's created 10 of their creation. So they're very numerous in number. And they explain a lot of what can't be understood in the West. When they talk about aliens and they talk about encounters and they talk about abductions, for us those are jinn. 
Those are the jinn in your home that are abducting you every day because they're in the home, they're in the home environment. They're a manifestation, they come through energy. When you turn on the TV, the energy that comes through them is them. When you listen to music, the energy that's coming through the sound is them. When you have a high, high speed internet, because they're an electrical being. They are facilitating their movement through all of these components and all this, this that we sort of help to bring into existence by their inspirations. We said that the timeline of, of mankind, of horse and buggy didn't really move until the advent of electricity. That's when they really wanted to put their world into this human world. And as a result, the, the, the height of sh shot up we went all the way to the moon within 60, 70 years. So it means their whole movement and understanding is through that electricity. So when we study energy, when we study sound, we understand the sounds that are vibrating. Why do they want humanity to listen to such bad songs now with horrible lyrics and horrible <laughs> words? Because to resonate at a low frequency so they can become possessed. So if we don't understand energy and frequencies, that's what's happening. So spiritual masters all knew that, that when you resonate at a high frequency, you actually destroy those lower beings because your resonance is so high, your zikr, your chantings, your mantras, your, your breathing practices are so strong. When the lower sort of demonic and, and evilness come towards your being to occupy you and to sort of uh, live within the human being, the higher frequency actually hits them out. And that vibration shatters it and God says in Qur'an that say to the truth when the truth comes, falsehood is perishing and falsehood by its nature is always perishing. I mean that which is false, it can't stay within the face of the truth and the truth is a light, is a purified light, a, a holy light, a sanctified soul with its spiritual practices. So that becomes the spiritual warrior. The one whom builds their light and builds their frequency, builds their chanting, why are they warriors against all these demonic forces? So then look at what is happening to, to society and to children now. The games, the videos, all of these are a bombardment to lower the frequency. When you lower the frequency of humanity, they become possessed because the negative energies that are coming into them and overtaking them. And it doesn't take much for an energy being to overtake a physical person that has no ability to understand or, or to, to have any spiritual practices. For us, we're like a television for them. They merely just touch your, your being and they can cast images into the head, into the heart. So imagine them coming into your physicality then yes, it would be a horrific thing and this is what possession and sickness. So, so much of the culture doesn't understand this and they used to. You know the concept of genius, when we use the word genius was from genies. You had an abundance of, of a, a genie or a jinni surrounding so that you had abundant flow of knowledges because their knowledges are far superior to the human knowledge unless it's a knowledge given by the people of the book in which they study the book and God gives them more powerful knowledge than the jinn knowledge. But even the term genius is from the jinn. So all of these were a part of the, the culture maybe hundred years ago and spirituality was lost and now people are wondering, you know, what, what's all this stuff that are happening? But Sufism has a, a, is a deep, deep understanding of all of these like a science for them. Most sicknesses and disease is caused by that realm that you don't understand. When that energy realm comes and one of them is nefarious and they just merely begin to touch your leg, they can send all sorts of sicknesses and negative vibrations within the vascular system of the body. So we're a very frail creation. When you don't have spiritual protection to wear, we have spiritual protections to wear. When we don't have spiritual practices and we don't meditate, we don't pray, we don't do our chanting, then you're just like a clay pot and these creatures come into the pot, they make people sick, they make all sorts of difficulties upon them. So yes, they're everywhere and in everything. Most sicknesses are caused by their proximity, 
most de decay and bacteria is caused by their proximity and uh, the difficulties that are facing humanity has been taught by the Prophet of Islam that when pandemics come it's the attack of the shayateen of the jinn. That when they come too much into the human arena and want to become too close to humans their nature, these nefarious ones their nature is very dirty. They, they, they have a different understanding, they, they, their body system, they, they release all of their waste through their skin, their smell, their, their sicknesses and bacteria. As they approach near people they become sick and sickened by them and their interest is to enter into the human being and attack the vascular system and the respiratory system. And that also we saw in Lord of the Rings. The fight is for the tree. If you remember the kingdom, the good kingdom where the king was sleeping and there was a tree that was burning, it's the bronchial tree and the respiratory system of humanity because it represents a, a, a great reality within the divine. And the negative force is, is fighting to enter into human beings and to overtake the respiratory system, the bronchial tree, and to stop them from having a purified breath and from having purified experience because the power of the breath. That when the breath is good, the zikr, the chanting and all of the energy of the breath, what happens with that breath? It's a divine breath that we've been given this grace by God as a, as a secret for our breath. When that breath comes into the breath it actually nourishes the heart. And then when it pumps with the zikr onto the heart and, and goes out to the lungs and the blood becomes purified and, and dresses all the 11 organs, you can see then the importance of the breath and that's why all spiritual paths are based on the breath and the reality of the breath and how to sort of master the breath, all that been lost. And now we see all these respiratory diseases in the last days and all the sicknesses that are coming and it's for that very nature and that's why the, the devils they don't want spiritual training. They don't want spiritual advice, so they don't put uh, shaykhs and, and spiritual masters on, on any satellite that they control and, and that's the difficulty. So that this, this realm of the jinn they want to occupy the earth and all of its humanity and they want them to be enslaved by that reality. But there are soldiers of light and the kingdom of God is coming and, and it's just a matter of people to prepare. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom is coming onto earth and it's not a tailgate party. It's a kingdom, <laughs> yeah, it's a kingdom based on goodness, righteous acts, cleanliness, uh, piety and modesty and everything that we do. So that's, that's the preparation. We can't do all these bad things and say, okay, I'm with God's kingdom. No, God's kingdom is very clean. Whatever you can think of the most purest reality, is above that, beyond our even understanding. So in the Lord's Prayer when we say the Kingdom of God is coming then it means that we have to live a life as if God's Kingdom is on earth. We pray, we fast, we do all of these practices. One to make sure that God is happy with us and the side benefit is that you'll be protected from all of these sicknesses and difficulties and all of these uh, negative energies that also are trying to make the Kingdom uh, on earth. Long answer, huh? Well, it was a very, <laughs> uh, very thorough answer, which is uh, exactly what we we hope for and and uh, and wish for. Uh, so you were saying that, that uh, raising our vibrations uh, through breath and other other practices uh, sure. helps to defend against <clears throat> this this sort of thing and uh, and, and negate it. So, I uh, do you. Do you maintain then or does the tradition teach that uh, all of these uh, sightings and things like, oh, you know, Bigfoot and, and uh, you know, the Loch Ness Monster and, and then things sure. like that are all jinn uh, from the imaginal realm or are there actual uh, aliens out there uh, across the cosmos or... Mm -hmm. Uh, and and I guess I guess that things like poltergeists and stuff are definitely a uh, jinn in the Sufi tradition. Is this correct? Definitely, I think that the concept of the word alien just means something not foreign to you. Mm -hmm. So there could be foreign to to many, and to many Muslims, it's very known. So it's not an alien encounter; it's a jinn encounter. The the jinn and spiritual beings they reside where you reside. 
they have homes and kingdoms on this earth in a different realm, it's what you call interdimensional. So they can have a home where you build your home and you didn't ask permission to build in their area. So while they're living in their home, uh, you think it's your home and they're intersecting with you. Now the very religious ones, they don't deal with people because that's their covenant to God. They swore their allegiance to God, not to bother the human race. But like even humans, you, you may go to a house of worship and there may be somebody next to you, but very nefarious, although he's in the house of worship. So those, what we have different layers or understanding of names of a mukhlis, someone who's very sincere and their deeds and their actions match their piety and their submission to God. And you have within their world also believing and unbelieving and very pious and, and very nefarious, a very bad character beings. The most of what you hear about in, in, in the news and in, in popular culture are the bad ones that are in the homes of people. They molest the people, they touch the people, they want to sleep with the people and that's why they're having all these different types of experiences. So when we watch these videos and say, oh, I've been taken up to a ship, that's their life. They're in your home, they didn't take you anywhere, they're just playing with you all night long in your room. Because you know, you don't wash before you sleep, you don't have your spiritual protections and that's their environment too. So that's why a lot of what came and the, the realities that came with Islam and the, and the teachings of the Prophet, Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, covered all of those. So it's not something foreign to our religion. We know which surahs to recite when we think we're having problems with them and they're you know, located in the same place and they're not acting properly. When we call the call to prayer, when we call it out loud, that's also supposed to cleanse that environment. So our life is a, is a life to understand and coexist with these different creatures, to scare away the bad ones and to call upon and inspire the good ones whom are pious and, and who pray and who want a home in which prays. So that's why a lot of the, the Sufi traditions, the chantings, the zikrs, all of these practices, it encourages very pious spiritual beings to live amongst us. And as a result of their living amongst us, many of the bad ones will run away because of their presence. But they require the home to be clean, the, the character of people to be clean, that the praying to be taking part into the home, certain creatures to sort of be away from that area. So there's all these different understandings and teachings. That's why I said it's like a science for us. It's not something that we have to guess. It's something that we live and when the shaykhs go into seclusion and they do 40 day seclusions in which they're isolated, they're given certain things to recite and their teachers are sort of spiritually watching over them, that realm begins to open by the grace of God and begins to teach them. So it's not again a philosophy, for them it's a reality. And as a result, they can guide people on what to wear, what to recite and, and how to approach this. Epilepsy and a lot of these different sicknesses are these creatures attaching themselves to people. And as a result, they're shaking, their body tremoring at night and the sleep uh, apnea, uh, sleep, what's the one, paralysis, all of these are genitals. Because everyone has it and Islam has it where people come and say, okay, something has just jumped onto my stomach at night and you give them a taweez, give them to recite. The Prophet of Islam came and said that, you know, wash before you sleep every night, recite these certain surahs of the Qur'an, blow upon yourself and, and sleep in peace. So all these practices came for a reason because we have to live amongst God's creation and they are about, what, 10 times more than us. For every human there's 10 of them, for every snake there's 10 of their snakes, for every cat there's 10 of their cats. They have a whole kingdom, they have a whole creation and they live amongst us and we have to just deal with them and, and uh, to be more spiritual and, and, and build our spiritual energy. I, uh, I know Cameron, I'm, I'm sure you want to uh, ask a question here but I, I, it just occurs to me, it, it's fascinating to me this notion that uh, there is another parallel really it sounds jinn society i mean it, it sounds like that they have sure. homes and, and and lives and so on and sure uh, i i i wonder animators know you know when you do animation right right you draw in layers right Yes. You draw the scenery one layer, then you put the rocks on another layer, then you put the, the character on another layer, and it may be like six layering. And Adobe graphics is the same layers it's called. 
we are the same. We have many different layers existing within this space because God's not going to waste any space. Then they they go they come into our realm, if you will, and and can it impact us? Do we ever peer into their realm? Yes, if they take you. If, if they, they take you there. Yeah, if they grab and take you into their realm, that's why there's also many teachings where people have been abducted and taken. Right. And they've been taken into their realm. If one of them falls in love with a particular person, then takes them into their realm. And then that's, that's why we have all these rules. You don't sleep naked because they come in touch. They want to procreate. They want to grab. If they fall in love with someone, they want to take them into their realm. So there's many of these different sort of understandings. So de definitely they're much more spiritually powerful. So they move between these different realms. Their technologies are far superior. Their lifespan is different than ours. Their lifespans are from 1,015 to 3,000 years. So you can imagine the amount of technology that they have. And when they want to appear through a physicality, they manifest in different type of physical forms. Right now there's a covenant that if they manifest openly, they have the right to be killed and awliya will go after them to destroy them. They've kept their covenant not to manifest. As a result, they pop in and out without openly declaring who they are and, and, and operating. As a result of that, they don't die. They be brought down and they re-manifest and their lifespans are, are very long lifespans and their nature is a fiery nature, they're not stable beings. As a result, their nations are always at war and people are getting caught between their wars and, and their characteristics. They can be burned accidentally by actions that you do at your home. So different things that you may do could burn one of their creatures, one of their you know children and they'll take a lifelong war with the person. And as a result, they, that person may think they have lifelong misfortune coming to them. Well, because the, that creature's life is 1500 years. So it'll, it would pass generationally to, towards a family. So yes, they, we have to understand that we coexist with them and what's, what's our, our duties and what's our protection and our understanding. But a society that doesn't understand anything about these things, then you can imagine that we have a, they have the upper hand. They, they, they seem to. I, so this would explain a lot about such phenomena as, for example, Skinwalker Ranch. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Sheikh. Yeah, I've watched the, the, the series on it. it it's, a, it's a fascinating thing. I actually interviewed uh, one of the men who, who, who broke that story, one of the journalists who broke that story, who first wrote about it, and they had personally spoken to a tribal a uh, policeman who had been driving along the road one night and came across two individuals that were basically, they looked like dogs in trench coats and hats smoking a cigarette <coughs> and leaning against the fence, which is absolutely bizarre. But in, the, yeah. in this context, it makes a certain amount of sense that, that yeah. perhaps the fabric around Skinwalker Ranch is weak and it allows uh, these these jinn to come through and, and manifest? Is this... No, it doesn't have to be weak at all. They have every right to manifest. It's, it's for them like walking through a door and their reality because God created them as like an electricity with an enormous amount of, of knowledge, they can manifest as anything. They can ma manifest as a big cat head on a slim stick and walking down the street. They think that's their form of fashion. Their fashion is their imagination. Whatever they imagine they can appear as because that's their form of fashion. So that, that's, you know, no restriction. So Bigfoot, of course, if the guy wants to appear as hairy, he walks around hairy in the bushes. But as soon as humans appear, then they try to veil themselves not to be killed because if they get shot in that state, they're going to, you know, vanish from that. But at the same time, they understand the covenant. If they start to appear, 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 then they've broke their covenant and they're no longer keeping the boundary of God and th their lifespans then will be shortened. And, and that's why we say the apocalyptic time is when the Antichrist comes, which we don't say Antichrist because that's just for Christians to think Antichrist it means that the one whom comes to deceive all nations. So we have it in Islam, 
that it is not the Antichrist, he's the deceiver. So Dajjal for us is called the deceiver. So he deceives every religious nation, every pocket of humanity, and he is of the jinn nature, and his armies are of the jinn nature. When they decide that they're going to show themselves and physically manifest themselves, then God gives command for the saints to attack and declare war against them. But for now, they're hiding themselves, so it's just teaching and, and going out and teaching people on how to build themselves, how to nourish themselves and how to survive these difficulties. And this war that they talk about, it's not a physical war. The humans, they will attack each other and destroy each other because of the bad nature of, of the devils and the bad character. But what was important in the Lord of the Rings, this battle that's coming is from the unseen power. So when the, when the humans were frail, what did they do? They went and asked for the allegiance of the king, the king of the dead and called them to come to be of service. And that's the same thing, when God rises and raises those whom have been given their spiritual realities, then it will be the unseen forces that come to the aid of, of humanity. Humanity by itself is very weak and unable to, to sort of survive that type of attack. So there's a lot that, that uh, Islam and uh, Sufism understand about the last days and Armageddon and it has a lot to do with the jinn nations and, and their ability to manifest or not manifest. And, and so yes, it, it's, it's a deep science for us. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Well, Sheikha, I mean, this, you've given us such profound insight. And again, I hope that people in the audience recognize this, this. This is not information that is necessarily very popularly known, even in the Muslim world. This is something that is a lot of wisdom that, that is being shared with us that's very special. It's insights and secrets of another realm. But with that, I wanted to share and ask a question. So I have uh, uh, Sufi teachers and friends in West Africa who are part of the uh, Tijaniya Sufi order. And Man, the, yeah. yeah, Sufi order. Very, very wonderful people. And sure. in, when the events of last year and the last 18 months started unfolding, the medical events and things, uh, they, they said to me that the events that you're watching now are a spiritual war. They're not what they appear to be. And I think you've, you've, you've referenced that in, in part of the country. They were saying that a portal is being opened and people's high level of fear about the stories that are being told about what's happening to us is increasing their fear and the lockdowns and being disconnected from each other. That fear is an energy that the, that the evil gen are using to try to portal into this world or, or to put more influence on over the minds of people. And they saw that as the beginning of sort of that dark war that can that we Muslims can think of as the war with Dajjal, the war with the, you know, the end of times. And I was wondering if you could give some perception because we're all still going through this craziness right now. In some ways, it's getting worse. So I would love to give your, your perceptions, what you feel willing to share with us. Sure, definitely that, 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 that is uh, from the teaching. That, that's why the, the prophetic understanding that every time there was an epidemic, pandemic, the Prophet of Islam, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, described that this is the arrival of the shayateen and marada. When they come too much, the jinns that are coming into this atmosphere, they come too close to humanity, these sicknesses start to come because so a human is here, if they want to possess the human, the problem is that when they start to approach, that human's becoming sick mm -hmm. and they're, they're collapsing. So they want to boost the immunity of this human so that they can come into them and overtake them and use the physicality as their means of a protection. And they come in and that's why people are dying and just the mere fact that their energy is entering into this realm in, in billions because they occupy no space. Yeah. That's what brings fear, that's what brings the energy, that's what brings all the bad characteristic and fear is the opposite of faith. So when a, a, a people don't practice and don't have faith, that's all that these devils want is that don't have faith, have fear and as a result of fear will occupy you more because they actually thrive on fear. Mm -hmm. So like in the mo monster, monster movie, monster, yeah. what, the monster Inc, Monsters they were sleeping. Yeah. You know the devil teaches so oh, that God won't punish him. Mm. Right? He's, oh, he's what teaching. Do we expand on that, please. So the devil has to give some information out. He has to teach it, otherwise, Allah will punish him. So he's going to say, No, I loved you, but I don't like these creatures. I don't like your Adam. I don't like the creatures of Adam and Eve. So everything I've given them a disclaimer. So he teaches what he's about to do, so people don't care. So in the drinks that people drink, it says spirits. You can't say, I didn't know. 
And on the cigarettes, it gives you a precaution that you're going to die from it. You can't say, I didn't know. And then he puts it in, in modern movies that the monsters ink, he says, I'm going to come make them scream and I take the energy of their screaming. Yeah. So there's a message in everything. And then he's out to make sure he puts his disclaimer and say, oh, they chose to do it. I told them there's going to be something wrong. And that's what Allah says in Quran, when they were teaching the bad and how to make deception between husband and wife, they had to give a disclaimer. That you know, the, and Marut, the angels, Marut, Marut. yeah, because they, they turn from the heavenly kingdom and they would give out information in, in the well of Babel. That's why they went into Iraq in that region to get to that well of Babel. So, all of that information, they have to give a disclaimer that you know you're going to be punished if you do this. They said, oh, We don't care, we want that. So, you'll see it in all uh, popular culture. So, that's the energy that they thrive on, and as a result. The, the people of faith and building their faith, that becomes the test of their life. That if you have faith, although I walk through the valley of death, I fear not for I know God is with me. Well, that's the time you have to have it. When, when people are saying, be scared, be scared and be scared, be scared of what? If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I'm not going to live here a thousand years anyways. But to have faith and all your spiritual practices, so when these creatures start to come, they can't possess you. And your energy and your strength and the strength of your faith pushes that energy away. So that's the battle right now for faith and, and that's why one after another, this is not stopping, this just began. One after another things will start coming in, coming in, do this, do that, do this, but that, that's not going to help anybody. What's going to help people is their spiritual practices and their faith and, and their connection with the, the Divine Kingdom. Yeah, it's... Uh... It, it, that does make a lot of sense. I would like to ask about, uh, you know, across all traditions, it seems that there are, in all traditions, pretty much a, a, a anticipation of end times. Sure. Uh, you know, in the uh, in the the Vedantist uh, tradition, the Hindus, uh, you know, speak of uh, you know the Kali Yuga. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Christian faith, uh, you know, has the apocalypse. Uh, and yet they all seem to have the same kind of conception of, uh, you know, let there be light and there was light. Uh, and then at the end, uh, end times come in a kind of violent uh, conflagration, in which case things get uh, reset. Uh, there, there does seem to be a lot of commonality in a lot of traditions, uh, you know, religious philosophical traditions uh, around the world. And I wonder, is it because they are seeing the truth just through different <laughs> levels of, of veils of, of distortion and, uh, and noise? Is that, is that a, a good way to think of it, that, that different perspectives might just see it from a different angle? And, you know, it's almost like there's many layers of, 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 of gauze. You know, it's like the, the game of telephone where you, you go around and you're trying to convey a, a message or a truth. And every time with each telling, it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little bit altered just because of human uh, uh, mistakes. Uh, can you discuss any of that, like commonality between these various traditions? Yeah, I would imagine that there's a, a you know, God's grace and, and majesty is to warn all his creation. He loves them. He created all creation with love. Now, depending upon the people upholding what their prophets brought, because prophecy was guidance, so that we're never alone. And that the Prophet of Islam said after me, then there are the awliya, the friends of God, that they keep the tradition in the way and that God doesn't leave the earth without 124,000 saints upon this earth. And that they're guiding, they're teaching, they're inspiring those that can take what been taught to them and to keep it to be clean, then they have a commonality. But in every tradition, I, I believe there has to be a warning for the days of difficulty and, and, and days of bad character and deceit. But the most important is, is this word deceit. So now you see everything around us. If you want to like know, is this the time? Say, yeah, because look at how much deceit there is. We've given talks on our own forum and platform, the concept of Facebook and Instagram, people making profiles that are not them, that are not their clothes, that are not their cars. 
And that's a manifestation of deceit. What you used to have as an inner desire, bad desire, you didn't, you know, talk about it. And God says, I won't punish you for any bad intention, but I'll give you the war reward of every good intention that you act upon. But now the world that we live in, it's all deceit. Uh, every platform is somebody who is not them and the images are not them and everything been Photoshop. And so we live now in a, a massive manifestation of deceit. So what more do people want as an understanding? And then that any type of extremism isn't the religion of God, that's a manifestation of deceit. So he has his agents in every religious agency, in every religious office, in, in, in every media platform. So it's not limited to just one or two, it's all, it takes the whole world. And this whole world now is sort of manifesting with all these deceits. So it's here, it's now, it's a matter of, how we're going to see through the deceit and the only way to see through the magic is through the inner heart, right? Wow. So that when, when the world becomes darkened and you can no longer detect this magic show, well, God gave us something. He gave us a heart. And as soon as you meditate and contemplate and build that ability, you'll see through your heart. So we, they don't train us to see through the eyes because the eyes only see the deceit of, you know, whatever is being played. And they don't teach you to, to you know, hear only what you're, you have. But like when we started off in the talk, there's an inner hearing. So when I meditate, I have to connect with an inner voice guiding me on my consciousness of, of right and wrong. And I have an inner sight. But if I use only my outer sight all day long, just look, 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 look. Why does he want the, these people to have so many tens of thousands of uh, images on TikTok coming to their eyes? Well, because the eyes are, are the, the, the window to the soul. If you're trying to meditate and all day long seeing these very, very negative images from the eyes and you're trying to meditate and keep your heart clean, it can never be clean because the eyes are distorting and the eyes are, the, the heart is like a hard drive. So everything the eyes are bringing in, it's, it's the devil wants to crash the hard drive. So he has an intention for everything that he's doing, negativity, whatever people want to call these negative beings or negative energies. They just want to crash the hard drive and, and people not to achieve the light that they have to achieve. But when somebody begins to meditate and contemplate and clean their heart, they can begin to see through their heart and they see what, what needs to be seen. And they'll have the clarity through difficult and dark times, they'll have clarity through their heart. And they'll be able to hear, although all the lies and deceit that you're hearing everywhere, they'll hear with an inner hearing of their consciousness, all of their sort of controls. So there is a spiritual station being broadcasted from the heavens. But do we have the ears to hear it and the eyes to see it? And if not, we need to get there. No, so that's that fascinating because, uh, you know, Twitter, for example, Twitter, mm -hmm is a terrible, terrible place. Uh, it is like a very toxic, negative uh, place filled with hatred and, and, and darkness. I mean, there, there is some goodness. I mean, I've got uh, wonderful friends. You know, we, we use it as a, as a tool of communication. Sure. But, uh, but, but really, uh, you spend uh, the more time you spend on Twitter, uh, the worse it, it seems to hurt you. And, uh, it's a fascinating notion that, well, because it's it's largely based on lies where people are able to hide behind, uh, you know, false identities and so on, uh, which I guess, you know, it can be, you know, the, the harmless play of a, of a you know, a, a costume party, or it can be uh, an excuse to exercise your worst impulses without conscience and uh and and that kind of just takes over the entirety of the platform i think that that's a very cogent uh and and perceptive analysis of of, of why twitter is just so bad and other social media platforms along those lines uh, sure. it's fascinating. even worse doomcock you know i was a sheikh i was booted off twitter i was booted off twitter uh <laughs> and apparently i was booted off twitter by people using deceptive 
uh, accounts, false yeah. names who, who rallied people against me and then Twitter removed me for no reason. Uh, but but that's yeah. the thing. There are bots. There are millions of, of fake, of not even human beings. There's When we talk about deception, there's robots on there that are sent by nefarious forces to pretend to be human. And I'm sure, sure. that's related to the Jin influence. Sure, sure. And, and any type of uh, deception now, I mean, the, the, it's just everywhere. So when people want like proof of uh, of uh, Armageddon and uh, the 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 people of deception and the the kingdom of deception, it's everywhere. So the children now are suffering as a result of this de deception, right? They just went after all these uh, social platforms and look at children today. If they watch TikTok, their whole life is a deception. They don't want to get a job because they think I'll be a YouTuber. Then I don't want to go to school. I I don't have a car like this. <laughs> 10 people that have these cars, I don't have a body like their body, I don't have cars like they have, I don't have money like they have. And you found out later they don't have it either because they've been posting lies. But what it did was then put the influence onto people and corrupt the minds of the youth that now don't even want to get jobs. They have no interest in trying to, to exceed because they, they won't get there. And that's all that the devil wanted and that's all the a negative force wanted was just, you know, deception, deception. And everything around us is, is a deception in which uh, Sufism comes to teach is that you have to teach in truth. You have to talk about the truth. You have to raise your children in truth and, and not one deception to another deception. And then it becomes a society just based on deceiving each other. And that's, that's where we're at now. Yeah. And that's why it's gotten so dark. Because, uh, you know, when you were face to face with people, it would bring out your humanity. Uh, you would uh, be sensitive to their feelings. You would, uh, if you're if you're a decent person, I mean, obviously, sure. if you're not a decent person, then you won't. But I mean, uh, I, I think that there are a number <laughs> of folks who are uh, ordinarily would be decent, but they have been seduced or empowered by sure. this anonymity to be as awful as they as they want to be, and uh, and it, it just seems to to take root. And I don't know uh, in, in these times. Uh, I don't know if it is the uh, the COVID situation being uh, you know isolated for for vast amounts of time, or if it's uh, a result of the this fictional, increasingly fictional life that people are living, where conscience is no longer a factor. But, you know, you get out on the roads and drive around and you're taking your hands, your life in your hands because people are driving like crazy people with, with great hostility, uh, aggression, and no, no compassion for the poor soul who's just trying to get into the other lane. Uh, it, it's like worse than it ever has been, in my opinion. I've been on the roads for a long time and I've, I don't like it. But but this is this is these are terrible times, really terrible times. And I think before we we uh, conclude this, I would definitely like to try and find some messages of encouragement uh, for folks who are, you know, increasingly feeling how bad things are right now. Definitely, I think the, the encouragement is, is, is the coming out on and talking tonight that you, you're not alone and, and people are not alone and, and God is giving us an opportunity is to build the light. So on one side, you say the COVID was bad. From another side, uh, it was an awakening. You know, to go into your room for 30 days and 40 days is by the grace of God uh, a, a gift. Either you're going to go to your grave at 100 miles an hour and just, you know, you die and you die in a state of heedlessness or God slows you down and says, look, what is your life all about? This company that you're you're loyal to, are you, you really, that's going to be your whole life. And, and when they slow down and don't have money, they fire you. So there has to be a greater purpose to my, my existence and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to sort of read things and, and try to find some inner peace and virtue and, and how to build my soul. So yes, that's why then many people came towards spiritual paths. We had no slowdown during COVID. We actually were much more busier. All of our online platforms were super busy. And that's when we know it's by the grace of God. You know, when we have this, it's like a ship for Noah's uh, ship. When there's no flood, you, you don't think to come to us and you don't think to take a spiritual path because everything's just fantastic. 
But uh, when it begins to rain, he was like, uh, let's find these people who have a ship and some sort of safety, some sort of, uh, you know, a, a self-confidence and a confidence in what they're teaching. And then uh, that's a light during a very dark, dark time. So I think it's an opening for spiritual paths and, and for people to come towards spiritual paths that you have to do something, you have to have a balanced life in which you take care of your soul, your heart and then your physicality, it, it all falls into place. But to live a physical life completely, uh, that's uh, for people who are now in, in a state of panic with all the difficulties and, and, and you know all, all of the hardship that's being faced. So I think it is a, is a great spiritual awakening as a result of all of these difficulties that have come upon the earth. And those that passed away, then God reward them and, and give them uh, the paradises and take away difficulties for them. So nothing is, is wasted in God's way. Those who passed away, there's not a waste for them, it's, it's a gift towards the heavens. So everybody has to go. So that can't be the, the, the thing to fear, it's just uh, how we're going to live our life on this earth. To build our spiritual ability and our spiritual understandings by the grace of God, inshaAllah. That is a, that's a very wonderful message. Uh, Cameron, are you, you look maybe like you are, have another question? Well, I have, I have infinite questions. <laughs> I, know. I, I would share, I would like to share with the Shaykh my own, a little bit of my own journey and perhaps get his comment. You know, uh, you may have heard from, from our friend uh, Yasin. I, I'm, I'm a Muslim filmmaker in Hollywood sure. for 20 years and you know, and I've had some success, alhamdulillah, but I've had many obstacles. You, you know, yeah. I smiled when you told some of the stories, like the story of the Quran, of the, of, of the well of Babylon, where yeah. Hazrat and Marut were trapped after they taught human beings magic. Uh, I have been writing a script about that, and, and people I were like, eh, I don't think there's a market for them. I'm like, no, I think there's a big market for that. I think you just don't want that mm. story out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been my <laughs> biggest issue is that I have been pushing a lot of stories uh, that are meant on the path of spirituality. I have a movie on Rumi and all these great things. Uh, but yeah there is a dark force within Hollywood, an occult force that I've experienced. It's not just arrogant people trying to make money who are atheists. There's an actual occult element to Hollywood that has sure. been opposing me. And I, I, perhaps you can give us some insights on to how, onto that side of, of Hollywood, which really influences the world through deception. Yeah, as we say within the, the kingdom of God, there's 124,000 saints on this earth. Mm -hmm. And from those saints, there's uh, 313 that have permission to speak. Mm -hmm. Then this whole kingdom of spirituality, it has its arch nemesis. So mm -hmm. shaitan has also his kingdom. He has those whom he has installed with power and authority and they occupy very high places. And remember they're, they're jinn, they're spiritual beings. So they enter into anyone's body, they occupy that person, they give dictates through their lips and through their ears and eyes. It's not something difficult for them. So they, they have their authority and they don't allow anyone that's not from their kingdom onto their platforms. As we don't allow, you know, a satanic and a satanist to come and sit and, and talk to our audience, it's just not going to happen. So the, the, they're you know, they're there. When you acknowledge they're there, then, you know, by the grace of God, He'll open certain doors of people who are not like that and, and then these messages can get out and these understandings can get out. But definitely they have a, a very tight grip on, on the, their, their kingdom and, and they occupy all the, of the sight and sound that they want to propagate, right? They want to propagate the song so they choose who these people are who are going to sing and they make sure that, that that's like a what would you call like a, a gospel for them? They want those words out to contaminate the ears of the youth and to adults and people. So those are very high positions, they're not something random and they want to control the, you know, the hearts and minds of people. So that those are, are very strong positions that the shaitan has guarded and, and, and the people who he has in place. So it's a matter of spiritual practices and, and the, the prayers of, uh, of the heavenly kingdom that open and facilitate what God wants to, to facilitate and these messages to come out. And again, they don't want, like you said, those messages to come out. When you understand the importance of the well of Babel, well, the first place they stepped was into Babylon in those wars. That wasn't about uh, any other subject other than getting into that uh, well and retrieving its secrets. And they occupied all around that well and sealed it off. So there was a reason why they stepped into that region. And that was for their person to come. 
So they've been preparing with a very strong belief for the, the Antichrist and that one to come. And they've been taking all the appropriate steps to, to take what they need to take and to secure what they want to secure for his arrival. Uh, it, it's very, it's very, it's very hard for people who have not experienced or have closed their hearts to that reality to sometimes sure. accept that there is this happening all around us. And, and in fact, many Muslims today are so obsessed with being rational that they have disconnected from our own spiritual tradition. I tell Muslims about, you know, there's occult things happening in Hollywood. They're like, ah, it's just conspiracy theory. I'm like, what are they? I mean, I've experienced it. Like, oh, you're crazy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, because, you know, it's, it's, it's by the grace of God that you have a heart that understands it, right? Yeah. So most people, if we talk to somebody, random relative or somebody, immediately it's like a computer shut down and they actually fall asleep yeah. in the middle of trying to describe something. It's just not in their program and it's not meant for their program to hear. Yeah. And immediately like it triggers their program to shut down and they go to bed, they go to sleeping. And then by the time you finish talking, they woke up again. So it has to do with guidance and the grace of God that he allows certain hearts to understand and then they're called to it. So I think Stephen King made a movie about the stand, yeah, which was the same understanding, right? That was an inspired movie that the people who knew it, they had dreams and they were going towards the devil. Yeah. And the other ones, they, they know, no, that's wrong. That direction's wrong and they went completely a different direction. And then that's the calling, that if somebody has a heart, God is calling them and they know who they are and, and, and they can't deny it. And the one whom God is not calling them, you can call them all you want, they they just fall asleep. Yeah. As, 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 as a, a yeah. close friend of mine has said to me just this past weekend, he said, I don't want to know what you know. I'm not interested. I like yeah. the world as I see it. <laughs> I said, okay, okay. Then I was well, that, that, that was another spiritual movie. It was The Matrix. Oh, right? Right. They don't want to take the red pill or the blue pill. So yeah. The Matrix was a very deep Sufi movie. Yeah. That once you go down the rabbit hole, there's no turning back. And that being plugged in, well, that's what the devil wants for us, right? Aren't we plugged in with all these devices and all these electronics and all of these? So we're the battery for the jinn. Mm -hmm. You know, the energy that we have... And, and the, the nefarious beings, they don't have this grace of the soul and the reality that we've been given. So they don't have an ability to get light, right? So they have to extract and, and vampirize people for their light. So we are the battery. Yeah. You know, when the heart is good and, and God is sending his grace, they want that. So these electronic devices we put upon ourselves, and we all have them, we're the greater battery. And it actually takes you. So there are spiritual practices for anyone at home. You put your hand out and say, okay, move, move my hand with your strength. And then the person tries to move and doesn't move it. Then hold the, the telephone on your heart chakra and then say, now move my hand. It come down in a second because wow. it pulled your entire energy Wow! and it pulled your spiritual protection. So it'll deplete all your energy. So they, they know all these things. This is their, their realm. So the more that people try to study spirituality and understanding energy effects, mm -hmm. then, you know, the more they can benefit from that. That is fascinating. The, the matrix analogy here was, uh, was a very, very powerful analogy because, you know, by that, these energy beings, uh, we are in, in essence... Uh, buying into their their realm uh, with a with a kind of false promise of of paradise. The paradise being, of course, technology. Uh, you know, with, with with the Matrix, it was a literal you know engineered paradise in terms of uh, you know the, the the programming construct. With us, it's the convenience of pulling music from the air, uh, movies from the air, having instant access uh, to everything, and yet our 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 Airwaves are full of, you know, 4G, 5G, God knows how many Gs, uh, and it's not it's not good. And yet, in in all the mystical traditions, uh, you know, going to you know Vedanta, uh, you know, the Christian mystic that famously had the revelation from God and said, "And all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well." Uh, in in the Matrix, Neo sees through all of this. And in a sense, he becomes one. He, he merges 
with the matrix where he can actually reach into the code and and rewrite it and he can mm -hmm. change its laws and everything and the that's the from spiritual mystical teaching mm -hmm. uh, yes uh, the other mystical okay. traditions talk about uh the the fundamental uh divine unity uh underlying uh everything even in the midst of trouble and uh and uh and strife and and so really the the more you dig down into the matrix the more fascinating it becomes and i'm just interested in in asking you uh as a as a neophyte here uh but someone who is interested in mysticism i uh, the, the underlying nature of this manifestation this creation uh is is it one of unity despite all of the uh terrible uh you know il portents and and gin and the covid and and you know all of all of the heartbreak of 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 life ultimately uh is is that christian mystic correct and all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well <laughs> i think we have a the the nature of being well the potential of being loving the the potential of being kind and i think because of that potential so strong the negative force is so eager to conquer us so we don't god says in quran that we don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves so this is about people wanting to improve themselves. So when people are rallying on the street and they're not happy with this, they're not happy with the government, they're not happy with whatever they're not happy with, well the real rally should be inside that you have to fix yourself otherwise God's not going to change anything. It's just a collective group of people who are not doing anything correct for themselves go out and now yell about it. So before and, and mysticism and mystics would basically teach everybody go back fix yourself. If we all if we're only five people on this earth and five of us you know fix ourselves busy ourselves about ourselves and cleaning ourselves it would be a beautiful world with the five of us or three of us. But if, if, if only one person wants to fix or nobody wants to fix, then it's going to be inherently difficult. Why? Because God gave us a, an ego that's very dominating and, and put a wild card of a devil on this game. And the devil and the ego, they become partners. So if you know the game, it's like a soccer game. Do you ever think that you're going to get the ball and just go all the way and score the goal? Although there's men on the other side, but they have given themselves to negative energies. And by the nature of the game, they're going to block you from scoring. So if we understand and we have to try to purify ourselves and protect ourselves and, and to try to rise above the bad characteristics. And the, the, the scene in the matrix is that uh, is in spirituality called to die before you die. So when he was running, 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 he was getting nowhere until one day he just faced them and they shot a bullet at him. And the bullet, because you know, if you fear death and you run, your whole life you'll be running from the devil. But if you don't fear death and you look it to the face and say, what is there to fear? And that was the scene in the matrix that was important because as the bullet came, God didn't want it to hit. And as a result, the bullet fell. The fear of death left and he could now see the matrix, he could see the Divinely Kingdom. And the reason that it was in zero one is because the Divinely Kingdom has a lot to do with the understanding of the numeric realm, the angelic realm and the binary code of on and off that we're on and we distance ourselves from God. But when God is on and you take a life in which to be off, then you can experience that oneness and the greatness of the Divine Power. Ah, fascinating. I can I know uh Cameron you wished uh to actually uh convey something uh to Sheikh Miramadi. Uh I would like to go ahead and, and give you the opportunity to do that about uh your your formal ritual. Uh and uh and then I would like to uh, if that's okay with you Sheikh, uh sure. go to some of the uh uh super chats here to uh allow folks to uh ask uh, their questions as well. Sure. How'd you come around? Are we doing the 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 bayat the initiation? Uh, Karen, you, you you muted yourself. 
I muted myself so I didn't want to interrupt the Sheikh. I apologize. Oh, yes, yes. No, that's uh, first of all, uh, yes, the, 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 my intention tonight, because I've been very interested in the Naqshbandi order in particular, and I wanted uh, to tell the chat what we're going to do with your permission. Sure, sure, go right ahead. So uh, the Naqshbandi order of which of which uh, Sheikh Nurjan is 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 a major teacher is one of the great ancient Sufi spiritual orders. I've been attracted to it for many years. It has such profound wisdom, and his his great teacher in the lineage, uh, Sheikh Nazim, uh, may God rest his soul, was one of the great saints of the past century in the Islamic community. And so, what I'd like to do, and for all those who don't know exactly what's about to happen, I'm going to, with the Sheikh's permission, I'm going to do what is called the Bayat, which is the Oath of Allegiance, which would allow me to be considered a student, uh, a member of the Naqshbandi community. I, I have participated in other Sufi traditions as well, but I feel a very profound connection to this one in particular. And so uh, if you'll all be willing to just Give me uh, five minutes of your time. I'm going to be doing the bayat, which will be saying certain things in Arabic. Uh, you might be like, what's he going on? But there are certain oaths of allegiance uh, to God, to his prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the saints of this particular Sufi tariqa, uh, the Sufi order. And uh, and so it'll take about five minutes of your time. Please stick, even if you don't know what's going on, please share with me the that I'm, I'm offering my heart here in a spiritual allegiance with our teacher here. So, uh, and then after that, we'll jump into super chats and, and I'm sure there will be people who have, have deep questions for the Sheikh. So, uh, you know, I have the Arabic in front of me, but I'm new to this particular tariqah's approach. So I'm going to rely on you, Sheikh, to guide me. Sure, sure, sure. Inshallah, a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Inna ladheena yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyunallah. Wa yadallahi fawka aydihim. Faman naqudhu wa inna ma yagutu ala nafsi. وَمَنْ أَوْفَ بِمَا أَحَدْ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهُ فَسَيَّتٌ عَجْرًا عَظِيمًا رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبًّا وَإِسْلَامِ الدِّينًا وَبَسَيِّدَنَا وَنَبِيَنَا مُحَمَّدٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم رَسُولٌ وَالنَّبِيٌ وَبِقُرْآنِ كِتَابًا وَاللَّهُ مَنْ نَقُولُ وَكِيلٌ وَحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَقَبِّلْنَا بِسَيِّدِنَا سُلْطَانٍ أَوْلِيَاءَ مَا شَيْخُ مُحَمَّدْ نَازِمٌ حَقَّانِي شَيْخُنَا وَمُرْشِدِنَا وَمَوْلَانَا شَيْخُ مُحَمَّدْ عَادِل Shaykhuna wa murshidina and under the blessings of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabbani, Shaykh Adnan Kabbani, Wallahumma naqulu wakeel, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu haq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu haq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu haq, haq ya Rabbi, illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhu wa ashabi kiram, wa ala mashayikina fi tariqata nashbandiyyata al-aliyya khasatan ruh imam tariqa qawta khaliqa shan nashban muhammad waysi al-bukhari sultan awliya shaykh abdali faiz al-daghistani sultan awliya shaykh muhammad nazim haqqani maulun shaykh sham kabani shaykh atnan kabani shaykh muhammad adil maabd khaliq al-khujdwani sahab zaman sayyid muhammad al-mahdi alayhi salam ruh allah sayyidna isa alayhi salam sayyif allah sayyidna alayhi salam thumma sayyid baka sadiq sayyidna umma sayyidna uthman Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, wa Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tazar alayhi salam, wa Sayyidu wa Saddatina wa Siddiqina al-Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmanir Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Iyaka Nabudu, Iyaka Nasta'een, Ehdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladina, Anamta alayhim, Qayr al-Mahdubi alayhim wa al-Dali. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amen. Haj Kamran, Allah bless you and dress you, inshaAllah. And Nazar of Allah be upon you and all the audience who are watching and difficulties to be taken away and lights to be entered into the hearts of people. And our beloved uh, DC, inshaAllah, God grace uh, be upon you always and to dress you with these lights and these blessings. If I said anything wrong, God forgive me and uh, God bless your audience. Thank you. Thank you, Shaykh. And thank you for the honor of allowing me to join this incredibly powerful order of the Naqshbandi, I hope that I can be of service to the, the saints and the teachers of the tradition. Thank you, Haji Kamran. Shall we see you soon in Los Angeles? Inshallah, inshallah. Um, help me help fix Hollywood. But uh, Sheikh, I hope we can stay for a few more minutes because there are sure. some questions from you from our audience that, that I think uh, will be very helpful. And I thank you for thank sharing you. that uh, beautiful moment uh, with all of us here. Uh, thank you. Know, you thank Cameron you. is a deeply uh, fascinating a uh, friend of mine, uh, actually, he's, I think of him as a brother. We are very, very similar in so many ways. Uh, you, you wouldn't, <laughs> I can't even believe it when we, when we think about it. When we, the more we talk, the more we realize that we are so very much alike. And I'm just uh, so happy to, to see this and uh, very, very honored. Thank you, Sheikh. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you gentlemen, for the, the honor of uh, inviting me tonight.
You are very welcome. And I want to go ahead and bring in uh, some of these uh, folks here. Uh, Just the me... easy questions, please. <laughs> yes. I, I, I will only read uh, ones that, uh, that... That are nice and easy. That Absolutely. <laughs> I would never allow uh, any... any uh, And, and I terrible. want to thank the chat for being so respectful of the thank shit. You. You know, you, you know, you're also open. I know most of you are not part of this tradition, but the warmth and the welcomeness that I saw in the chat is really a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Bless all of you guys. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of folks. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, let me see. Uh, Corey on which in residence uh, with the five dollar super chat. Thank you, my friend says Assalamu alaikum, my friends and a merry meet from your friendly neighborhood, which he is a, a Wiccan. Uh, so he he sends uh, some greetings there. Uh, Beth Beth Arstead with a, a three dollar super sticker of a of a pair giving a thumbs up. Thank you very much, Beth. We very very much appreciate that. Um, Squire Waldo with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, Squire. Says Assalamu alaikum and shalom. Uh, peace shalom. to all. Peace to Thank all. You. Uh, which is wonderful. It's such a wonderful bunch of folks here. Uh, it's so open and so kind. Uh, it's it's a it's a very unique community here. Uh, that, in my experience, anyway, on YouTube, it can be a, a terrible place of great hostility and hate, but not the not this bunch of folks. And uh, and, and I, I just love them very much. Thank you, guys. Sure. Um, let's see. We've got uh, a number of super chats about uh, William Shatner and stuff, but we'll we'll get to those uh, once the once the shake has uh, has left. I don't want to bore him with that. Uh, Warachi with a, a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Warachi. Says saw something weird in my home a year ago. Got up at night for some reason, turned a corner, and encountered a hunched-over being with red eyes and clawed hands. Turned right around, waited with a knife, but nothing happened. I uh, shake. I I would assume that that yeah. was a gin. Most likely, yes. Yeah, that, that, that those are the encounters and and the form that it can take to scare people. Maybe I, it depends on on what's happening in the house. That's why in, in our in our way and in our teaching we have uh, the religious writings that we put upon the wall, and uh, the different practices and recitations to put upon the house. Because again, like we said, that they're ever prevalent, and the ones that uh, are of a nefarious nature, they don't just leave if they start to come. So that's why then if they contact and you get all of these writings that you put upon the wall and, and all of these uh, the protections, ruqiya, that give a protection again for the body, for the home, for, for the, the property, so that they understand that uh, this is not just an open territory to come into. That's very, that's very important uh, indeed. Uh, Jacob Holler has a very good question here. Uh, this might be... Mm. Uh, too hard a one, but we'll see. <laughs> At least it's respectful. Uh, Jacob Holler with a $5 <laughs> super chat. Thank you, Jacob. He says, why do you think uh, children are born with disabilities? Yeah. The ways of, of God towards man, uh, an ancient question. Uh, any Sufi teachings mm. about, about this? Yeah, you know, the, the, the complexity of the divine is, is not something that can be... Uh, uh, sort of simplified, it's at so many different layers. So one understanding that has to, to set the, the standard is death is something good. If in the West you think death is bad, then everyone who dies is a punishment, then it's a misunderstanding according, you know, we come from heaven, we're going back to heaven. So when we believe that death is our abode and that God wants for us a beautific paradise, it sets now a, a platform. Then when you come to sicknesses and, and children and what type of burdens that they want to carry, what type of burdens they agree to carry, if you're a spiritual being coming for a physical experience, we all have a two-way ticket. And the, the devil has made people to forget that by a child being born and when it's born you say happy birthday and then when it's one year old you say hello you're now one years old no it's actually one year and nine months old it was born in the womb 
-hmm. When it came out, you should have celebrated nine month birthday party for him, <laughs> right? But if you negate that nine months, then it's easy to you know take that life away and say no, it's not a it's not a being. But more important spiritually is that that it comes with a two way ticket. You came from the heavens and you're going back to the heavens. So we're here for a physical experience. And in the heavens before we came down, Allah <laughs> that God has given to us all, this will be your destiny on this earth. You're going to do this, you'll achieve this, you'll achieve that. And whether it was easy or bad, we said yes to God. And it's infinite wisdom because He has the ultimate plan. He knows that by coming to earth and having a, a sickness, having a handicappedness or, or having less money than other people, whatever it is, there's an immense wisdom. So these children that have like what you call a, a, a mongoloid syndrome, they have an immense secret. They're not just regular children. When given to families, those families are, are, are basically taking care of a saintly soul. So these sicknesses that you may deem them as, as handicaps or sicknesses or whatever it is because in our physical mind we only see one thing, in God's infinite wisdom that's a saintly soul and it's come into that family to carry many burdens because if the ultimate understanding is that we're going to die and God wants for us a beautific paradise, not a beatific house in Malibu, that's a temporary life. He wanted us to have a beatific house in paradise. So when we come into this world, we come in saying, yes, whatever God has written for us, we try our best to fulfill that. And many people come and forget what they agreed to give God and what they agreed to serve God with. And that's, you know, that's its own wisdom. But when people are, are sick and have difficulties and hardships, God is cleaning in many different directions. And those people whom are sick, nothing is wasted in the way of God. They're achieving immense realities for their soul in paradise. So well, it's, it's, I, I, that's, that's, uh, that is a, a very good answer. I, I wanted to uh, remind, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, let you know, Sheikh, yes. uh, that uh, we here at Xanadoom uh, will be making a, a donation, a modest donation of uh, $500 to your center. And uh, thank you, Sheikh. Absolutely. My, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. My dear friend, Mexican Iron Man here. Mr. Uh, Ironman, uh, working with uh, your Mr. your director, your tech director, uh, sure. to see how we can uh, uh, get that uh, to you. Thank you, thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you. And, uh, thank thank, you, thank you, you, Mike, for for all you do uh, on behalf of our community and uh, Mashallah. we we Mashallah. love you, Mike. Mashallah. Mike is a Sufi at heart. He truly is. He's oh, definitely. He's been emailing and he just showed me he had the book and the timeless reality. He had the timeless reality, so it's fantastic. There we go. There you go, Mike. There we go. <laughs> and look, uh, Yasin, I'm so excited. Muchas gracias. I Shake, I didn't. Did you say muchas gracias, Shake? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Muchas gracias. I, I'm, I'm already uh, well into the book, but I just noticed the other night, uh, I, I almost died when I saw Yasin had it, and it was one of the signed copies. Beautiful, beautiful. So beautiful. I'm, I'm very blessed. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Because, thank this you. is amazing uh, knowledge here. That I've thank been you. Gaining. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me see. Let me get back. I think there were a few that came up just a, a couple of minutes ago while the sheikh was talking. Awesome. Yeah. I will. I will get to them. Uh, uh, a few Google two with a two dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, are there different sources of evil, or uh, one source? Hmm. Sheikh, it's interesting. Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure there would be many, many sources of evil. Not so just they one don't thing. all spring from uh, in, the, in the Sufi tradition, shaitan. Uh, there are just uh, it's just a, is, is evil then just a unavoidable uh, byproduct of of manifestation and uh, and free will. Uh, evil springs from a source of negativity. So the shaitan is a, is a wild card. If if this life is like a video game. Right, we don't really change the box. The box is an engine, and there's usually two doors and three things that you have to accomplish within this box. 
So as if God had programmed this life as a video game. And shaitan comes in like a wild card always to make an agitation. Mm -hmm. So there's a wisdom on why he agitates. If you're somebody who believes in the Divine then you say, okay my life is going to be based on testing so I have to keep good character. Not just to say I have good character but I'm going to be tested towards good character. So then that becomes then a testing. So in a lab the fire brings out all of the reactions, right? In a chemistry lab if mm -hmm. you want to have a catalyst for something to happen you introduce fire. The fire comes and boils everything. So shaitan is like a boiler. Mm -hmm. That negativity boils everything and makes everything, you know, just to start to happen. People have characteristics they didn't know existed and it starts to come down, come out. So spiritual path is then to identify those characteristics that why are you getting angry, why are you reacting like this, write these characteristics down and then these become the bad things that I have to start to conquer. But as far as, you know, people being evil and wicked, I think they took some of the courses from shaitan and evilness and they kind of went all over the place with it. So everybody has a capability of being negative and, you know, their negativity is a mixture of, of shaitan and their own production. This so is… Uh, this is very much in accord with uh, a Christian… Uh, uh, concept of, of Satan, I, you know… As I understand it, uh, the word means obstacle or or barrier, and mm. uh, and so it's it's like, uh, in fact, uh, you know, in in one of the books, I believe it's Job, uh, you know, uh, Satan is uh, was an angel, and uh, and and is it makes a, a bet with God that uh, Job can be uh, corrupted, and and so it, it's it's like. Uh, it's part of the plan as opposed to something against the plan. And it, it seems like that is what you're saying as well, Shaykh. Yeah, to an, an understanding that again, the shaitan is a jinn and he, his, his reality is Azazil that was a jinn and that he took to worshiping God and our understandings and teachings, he didn't leave even one hand space where he didn't prostrate and as a result of all his worshipness he was raised and raised and raised and raised until he was raised to the height of being able to teach the angels. But he was never an angel, he was a jinn and is a jinn till today. And as a result he was teaching the angels and maybe a hidden arrogance and pride within his characteristic and he thought he would be the deputy of God because he had rise to such amazing heights, he had prayed everywhere, prostrated everywhere. But God had a different plan intended and when he revealed that, no, my deputy is going to be Adam and that I've taught him all the names and he assembled all the jinn and all the angels and he said, look at the knowledge that Adam has. When he began to teach these knowledges, God asked everybody to bow down to show your respect for the knowledge that I have bestowed upon this creation of Adam salam, and all bow down except Azazil. And when he did not bow down, God looked and said, bow down, he said, no, I'm not going to bow down. Then he says, you're cast out from this presence. And he wanted to show the angels that all his knowledge and all his worship it didn't benefit him if when I told him to bow down he said no, otherwise all the other times he was bowing down was for his own ego. But when I told him to bow down he said, no you're out, go down get and cast him out of paradise. So that's the same, that's the same testing is that if we do what we do out of arrogance but not for God our life is going to be tested. It's not a matter of what I say, it's about my deeds and my actions and God is going to test me. So as a result he threw him onto earth and then this is his abode to now because he got cast out because of Adam, he's not very friendly with the children of Adam either. And I as see. a result he's after them, he said, you like them so much but I'm going to show you how bad they really are. I'm going to attack in front of them, to the right of them, to the left of them, behind them, above them and below them. So we have a satanic attack from six directions in our life. 
So as long as we know that then God you know gives us our protection, our prayers, all our practices as a, as a means to protect ourselves from satanic attack. Thank you sir, I appreciate sure, that. Sure, sure. I, I, Casey Osowski with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Casey. He says, hail to all. I'm not sure I understand all of this, but thank you for sharing this tonight. You've given me much to consider. Well, Casey, you're thank very you. welcome. And uh, we, we we try to, you know, expand horizons on this show. And sure, sure. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you for today. having us. Yeah. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank and you. Zebulon Pike with a 499 super chat. Thank you, Zeb. Says, hail to the overlord, the amazing guests, and to the chat. Thank you, Zebulon Pike. You're very kind, sir. Uh, yeah. Kathleen Morrison with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Kathleen. Says, thank you for the perspective and the hope. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Peace be with you. Uh, Diego Flores with a, a 10 a Peruvian soul super chat. Thank you, Diego. Says, may I ask, is it possible for people to be sensible to these forces and subconsciously try to warm us through works of fiction like the Daemons of 40K and their similarities with the jinn? So parallels in, in fiction uh, uh, warning us uh, about, about this kind of thing. I think it was that the same as like when we said in the in the beginning that all the movies there's message in many of them. Is that is that what we mean? Mm -hmm. I, I that think in the I movies and culture and, and cartoons, many of these are being disclosed. So there's the the one at night. What's the one at, at night? The gargoyles. Disney makes a uh, cartoon right. called gargoyles. Yeah. yeah, it's very real. Those statues, and that's why we don't have statues. Because the negative forces, they occupy the and they shelter themselves because they're electrical beings with no shelter. They shelter themselves within those statues. And Disney showed it. At night at 6 o'clock, Maghrib time, they came walking out and they were walking around throwing things from the roof of the building. <laughs> yeah. And it, it seems comical but it's also a way to introduce themselves to children that don't fear me, I'm something nice, I'm funny looking. And it sort of diffuses the children to, oh well then it's commonplace for them where they should be scared of you know negative forces, negative creatures. They sort of want to familiarize themselves through you know, popular cartoons and, and movies, which that, that can be very dangerous. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that's something so profound because I've experienced that directly in Hollywood where I've been asked to put in things, which because I studied a little bit of esotericism, I'm like, why are we doing this Kabbalistic thing in here? I know what this is. <laughs> no. Why are we putting that in here, right? I, what's the intention of putting this little magical symbol from that tradition in here? And then they get startled that I know what it is, right? And yeah. that a little agitated. Because you're just supposed to do what they're asked, not not actually know what they're asking you to do. Sure, and and like when they watch the horror movies, the mm -hmm. symbols on the wall when they want to show show a satanic yeah. movie or a satanic scene, mm -hmm. those are real symbols. Absolutely. And by watching them, those energies come into your environment. Yeah. And the incantations, sometimes we've heard, those are correct incantations. So they're reciting things they shouldn't be reciting on television. So you you have to mute the, the sound so that that incantation doesn't come into your home because it's very difficult to leave these energies. So, you know, anything you call upon in, in, in Sufism, before any grace, before anything you do, you have to say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitanir rajeem. I seek refuge in God from the accursed devil. So that's a barrier. When you break that barrier, you basically have to invite the devil into your existence. Otherwise, he can't come. That's why all the Dracula movies are showing you their disclaimer. They come as a handsome man and they tell the young girl, invite me in. Why would you invite <laughs> you in? Why don't you just come in and then, you know, eat everybody? But they can't and they have to show the disclaimer. So that's in Sufism and in Islam is our teaching. You know, I seek refuge in God from the accursed devil. So we try to live a life not breaking that. Don't invite the devil in. So when you summons them, conjure them with these incantations and these logos on TV shows or a Ouija board from Walmart, you're calling in very, very horrific beings. They don't leave and they, they cause enormous amount of difficulty and hardship within an environment. You know, Sheikh, you know, one, I, two very quick things I'll say. One is uh, that I was in contact with the director, William Friedkin, of, uh, of director of The Exorcist. And it's interesting because Friedkin is a believer in God. And he's actually mm -hmm. a believer in exorcism because of his experiences 
on that film. You know, most yeah, the Hollywood, they're like atheists or pretend to be atheists. But he said, no, I experienced actual spiritual horrific activity on the set of that. I know that this is a real phenomenon and wow. I brought it into this world without realizing it. And and then there's that very famous movie Nosferatu, which is the silent film of vampires. And I learned this and I was shocked. Someone who is in the spiritual community told me Nosferatu, the producers of that were involved in an esoteric group in Germany. And the horrible vampire image was actually crafted upon the uh, the the jinn that they worshiped. And they oh, wanted wow. to use Nosferatu as a way to bring that being into the physical world. That's yeah, we have, <coughs> we have talks now on the secret of manifestation. Mm -hmm. So it means that we're a very powerful creation, right? So we have the ability by God's grace to manifest. So you manifest ourselves or manifest? No, manifest beings? everything. Everything ah. is manifesting. So we'll go back to the beginning. Me and you are on an island and nothing's been created. And by inspiration, God gave us a hand and thumb and you draw a circle. As a result, I go and build that circle. So now that which didn't exist begins to manifest onto this earth by inspiration. So all these buildings all around us and all that we've made came from where? It's, it's beginning to manifest from our power to bring that. Otherwise, if we didn't have a thumb and God didn't put the inspiration, we'd still be living on a dirt island. So all of these things are manifesting by our power. Well, the devil knows that. So he wants us to manifest our worst desires, our worst things. So when somebody makes a horrific movie, a horrific demonic movie, the devil's inspiring him because he knows we have power. Manifest it, manifest it. And anything that you conjure up, it now is a result of manifestation. God brings it into existence because it can't exist without God saying, oh, wow, I've never seen that before. That is interesting because I've been uh, asking this question, Cameron, haven't I, on these uh, live streams that I've been doing about, is it possible that, you know, uh, a lot of times people ask, why don't these, uh, you know, why, why don't we have more photographs of Bigfoot? Why don't we have more photographs of, of you know, UFOs and, and everything else? And is it possible that, uh, you know, the witness uh, in, in, in each case has in some way uh, temporarily manifested this kind of, of thing without knowing that they did or, or how they did? Uh, and it, it doesn't really have uh, as high a level of reality as, as they do and it, it rapidly uh, dissipates. Is that is that possible, Shake? That's something different. But these those Bigfoots are jinn. But what we're bringing out now for you is that we have the ability to manifest. So when we're making these, these shows and these demonic creatures, they're manifesting now. Yep. As a result, they're now onto this earth and they've come into this plane and into this existence. They can't, you can't, draw anything that God hasn't already had. Mm -hmm. So we're manifesting all these things. You know, there's not a horror movie where God looks at it and says, what is that? <laughs> so anything, <laughs> you've, anything you've seen, it's when already been in the program and the program, whomever is conjuring it, is bringing it into this dimension. So we have a very powerful ability and the devil knows that, right? So then what's going on with Instagram? So the bad desire of somebody that used to stay dormant, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that. He comes and whispers, no, put your image out there, what you really want to be. And all of a sudden this image appears, this person appears, the unclothed person appears, start doing all these bizarre things that wasn't them. And that now has so much power that it destroys even their own being. So there's a very real power of manifesting and that's what's happening upon this earth and, and people are, are manifesting all their worst characteristics and they're bringing it into this plane. And uh, they can manifest the, the creatures, these demons and, and conjure all these different uh, types of things. So then the, when we understand how powerful the human heart is and the, the human soul is, that's why then to, to bring it towards the divine and the divine manifestation. That when you meditate and you contemplate and the Prophet taught that everybody will take a companion into the grave. Mm. 
And what is that companion of yours? And the companions, the Sahabi and the companions of the Holy Prophet asked that, what, what, what is that companion? He said, your deeds. If your deeds were good, he'll appear to you as a very beatific angelic reality. And you'll be astonished and say, who are you? He said, I'm your good deeds. I'm here to accompany you in the difficulty of the grave. And if the deeds were bad, it manifests as a horrific creature and says, I'm here now to accompany you in the grave. So it means that's the manifestation at death, but that wow. every moment in our life we're manifesting that being, either it's a good or it's a bad. So the more we do good, the good being is praying for us, is sending us lights, inspiring us towards goodness. So that, that's a very important reality and, and why we do good and do good now so that it will begin to guide me and inspire me to goodness. But many traditions have the reality of manifestation. They would conjure up many demonic beings and those beings would come into this plane and, and do what they do. And so we are, we are strong and very spiritual reality humans. See, this is what the shaykh is saying goes back to, I think, our, one of our earliest talks on piercing the veil, which is that it's, remember the tulpa we talked about within the Tibetan Buddhist tradition uh -huh, of uh -huh. being projected by the imagination? This is exactly what he's talking about, that, the, that we as creations of God can reflect his creative ability and what we imagine becomes real. And, and, and our <coughs> ethics and our energy create a reality that's, a, that's an actual tulpa. That it could be. It, 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 well, I think it, it, it does happen, I think. But, uh, but I don't think most people can consciously uh, control it. I think that uh, it uh, is an unconscious manifest. I mean... You, you, well, that's what the secret was trying to teach. The secret was trying to teach oh. that, but to conjure up a good parking space. Yes. <laughs> right? So they said, think about it. Think I want this parking yes. space. Yeah, it is true. So you will, but you'll be accountable to God that you use this for only your material gain. That's it. That's I gave you all this power and you just conjured up parking spaces. So that's that's what the devil is trying to do is that you get us to use our power in an inappropriate direction so that we are accountable to God. But when we don't understand how powerful we are, then yeah, all these things seem to be random. They're not random. The people wanted it, people desired it, and it begins to appear in their life. And that's why the old saying, be careful for what you pray for, it starts to happen. I don't like this, I don't like that, and oh, what's the kids bothering me? And then what takes away the child? So the, the, everything we are accountable for. And that's why then all the spiritual teaching is that, no, no, think good, pray good, have good actions. And all of a sudden you see that, you know, all these blessings are coming into your life. Why? Because that good being that you've brought with your good deeds is now blessing you. Very you continuously very praying. So, so prayer and meditation. Yeah. Prayer, prayer, meditation, and and acts of selflessness. You know, feeding other people, feeding yourself is good for your digestion. Feeding others is good for your soul. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, and you, and you are here feeding us tonight, and we thank you, Sheikh. For thank this. you, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. I, uh, uh, Squire Waldo with a ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Squire Waldo. It says some Jews believe there are two worlds, but only one God. Uh, we live in a world that is a challenge. The faithless believe there is only one world, but many gods, and they worship those gods. Uh, are these gods jinn? Yeah, that's it. That's what Quran says: is that you took these jinns as your lord and saviors because of the superior might and power. Who brought these 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 megalith structures? Mm -hmm. You think some slaves did that with a, with a stick and a rock? But these were the jinn <laughs> entities that would show their, uh, their power and their superiority. And as a result, they were bowed down to. And what they wanted was the, the worshiping of people. And they said, oh, they're aliens from a th you know, many thousands of years. They live for thousands of years. Their life is 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. So these manifestations and all these things that we're seeing, that's from their reality. And that's, you know, that's their existence and their power and the importance of, you know, how to, to manifest our, our good nature and our good character is the immense uh, reality of our, our being, how to, how to bring that about and, and how to bring that energy about. Excellent, excellent answer. Thank you, sir. Uh, Narat Anaximan uh, Bear with a $5 super chat says, what a great episode. I'm looking forward to many, many more. Thank you, Narat. I appreciate that, my friend. 
Uh, Lord of the Eagles reaches with a five euro super chat. Thank you, Lord of the Eagles reaches. Says need more of these chats. We are all the same, different paths, same destination. Uh, well, this is that's part of what uh, we, we talk about here. Thank you, Lord of the Eagles reaches. Uh, uh, douchebag Kylo with a five four ninety nine <laughs> super chat. Uh, referring to Kylo Ren, we, we don't love the Disney sequel trilogy for Star Wars around here, Shake, just so you know. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, we can talk about it in one second about sure. how the Disney took for those kinds of agendas change a heroic story into a dark story. But let's answer the super sure, story. sure. Yeah. No, that's that's a good I'd love to talk about you know, that. The, the, the one thing that I forgot about the what the gentleman asked about the gods is that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that they come to make themselves to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. And that the belief that there can only be one God, because there's a circle, you know, our existence is like a dot. So it says, much as you, you zoom into the dot, the circumference can expand infinitely. So this, this, all of this existence is but a dot for God. Yeah. No matter how big we think we are, it's just one dot. And then take that dot and, and look at a microscope with it, what happens? The circumference of it begins to expand. Circumference can be infinite in size, but there can only be one center, one center of power. And the, the space from the center to the circumference is always equal. Means that everyone has an equal opportunity to reach to the Divine the Presence. And the messengers of God were the radius, what we call the Rasuls. So God gives it to us in the symbol of a circle and that's why in our sacred geometry the importance of the circle. So every point on the circumference has access to the center, mm -hmm. but there can only be one center of power powering everything or, or there would be an immense battle. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if there were multiple powers then the sun was not going to rise, the, the orbit of the, the planet would not be in this orbit. So many, many of these different realities, you know, there's a, a self-evident proof of everything. There can only be one center power and that reaches to all the points of the circumference. And that's the importance of how to connect. So a spiritual path is that you live your life on the circumference and now you want to move towards the center. So it's not looking out but looking in. And God gave us a belly button as a reminder. It's like an umbilical cord. So you, uh, He says, you're attached to me, you're attached to my presence. Your, your breathing, your essence, everything about you is that you were never a thing not remembered. So we have, we have a, rem a remembrance of the belly button that remains for us to show us that no, we are connected to that center of power. And our life is to pursue that reality back into the center of power and that's why we call it the uh, journey to the Lord of power. Because the closer you go closer to the center, the shaykhs who go closer to the center, they have more knowledge. Because the one who holds the center holds the knowledge of all realities. Ah. Uh. Right? Yeah. If, we, if we're only on the outside, we don't know anything, we just know my own point. Mm -hmm. If you leave a life from the circumference and say, I want a spiritual path, now you're walking your radius to the center. So that radius is a tariqah, is a path. The more you step in it is your Gnostic way. The closer you get to the center, what's happening at the center? It's the information for all the points. What we call the knowledge, ulum al awwaleen wa akhireen, the knowledge of everything. Because you're at the center. Mm -hmm. So they move to the back of knowledge, to the beginning of time, they can move to the end of time. So the, it's a journey towards that center of power. And that's, that's what's uh, you know, evident in our, in our understandings and our realities. And that's why this universe is, has a sun. Our galaxy has a sun, but the universe has a pistol star which is billions of times more powerful than this sun. And it comes like a circle with a power source. And that power is reaching to everything. That sun's ray is reaching to all the galaxies, all the universes. Ah, uh, it's a lot to process. It, it is. Uh, it, Kylo we should, we should was asked- Kylo's, yes, we should answer Kylo's question. Uh, uh, any truth to the notion that we each pre-selected our respective lots in this life that we each chose to live our own lives uh, to for some reason. Almost like uh, a question about karma in the uh, Vedantic uh, uh, tradition. Yeah, I think we, we talked about it in, in the handicapped child. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. There, where we have a day called Allah stupid Rabbikum Qalu Bala. On a day of promises, God said that this is your destiny. Are you accepting it? And we said, Bala, yes, to the Divine, the Presence. And then we were cast upon this earth. So it was already pre written what we would do and, and how we would do it, and would it be a hard life, an easy life. And, and again, because you have to have the notion that paradise is supreme, right? You want to come back and get the best real estate in paradise because that lasts for eternity. Not, not to get a house on the material world only, but I want my eternal palace, it's eternal for me. So then the more testing, the more difficult the life that they took, well then you can imagine then they're sitting very nice in, in paradise. Yeah. So when we understand that, then when we see sick children, well, those are very high level souls. A soul that God didn't want them to live 30 years and contaminate themselves with sins and they lived five seconds, five breaths and they left because he didn't want them to, to be contaminated. So these are maybe churubin and angelic souls that they have to, everything has to taste of death. So everything is going to come through this, this uh, mother earth and head back out. So there's infinite wisdoms on why people come, why they live short lives, hard lives, long lives, bad lives, good lives, everything. The one who lives a bad life, then there's a wisdom in that, that they lived a bad life, but then there should be somebody that comes to intercede for them, that you are your brother's keeper. That when people are doing bad or they don't have enough, then the ones whom do good and and, and have, they should be taking care of those. They should be praying for those. So there's a whole system that's been organized. It's just a matter of everybody, you know, trying to build themselves and this world will be a better place. But when the haves don't care about the have-nots, then it looks like, yeah, horrific world. But God didn't make that. The humans did. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to come and take care of anyone, but that wasn't the rule that they signed up for. They were supposed to make it and feed everybody. They were supposed to go out and, and teach people. They were supposed to go out and support people. And then we had an uplifting of our spiritual reality. Shaykh, I would like to ask, it seems that in these times, one of the worst or at least most dangerous things that you can do is tell the truth. Uh, it, it seems like a, a time of lies and uh, and when you speak truth these days, it seems you get attacked for it and descended upon from all sides. Is it is it has it always been this way, or is it uh, a sign of uh, of of these these dark times? No, it's a sign of the dark times because the the truth and the false they don't get along. Yeah. So the the Quran says the truth comes, and the falsehood perishes. So it means things that are of a false nature, they don't want the light of truth. So if we teach by the world of light, that let's say you build yourself and you're luminous like a light bulb. Well, you go into an area of, of people whom are filled with badness, you're burning them. So those are the Dracula movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't Dracula go into the sunlight? Because he, he, operate, he operates within the darkness <laughs> yeah. and the sun burns him. And that's why in all old caricatures, Europe and Middle East, saintly and, and pious souls, their heads were illuminated like suns because mm -hmm. their heart is lit. And as a result, it shines upon their face like a sun, like a moon. And that light that illuminates is like the Dracula movies. Everything, people doing bad, they don't like pi these pious people. They don't like the light from them. It burns and agitates all of the creatures that are occupying them and that's the difficulty. So first we have to understand we're like a bus, that you're not alone in your body. You have a soul, you have an ego and most likely you have picked up many jinn beings that are living within you, right? You haven't vacated them, you haven't thrown them out, you haven't done any spiritual practices. So imagine having a house in a nice area and you left your doors open all day long. Well, you'd have probably 50 homeless people living in the rooms. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then you're surprised you have difficulty eating and somebody's bothering your children and, and you know they're stealing your items well, because your home is not locked. 
So God's like asking us the same thing, your heart is not locked, your body, all these spiritual creatures are entering into your body. Everything you listen to brings spiritual energy, everything you watch on TV brings spiritual energy. You walk into the, the, the malls and downtown areas and, and all these horrific things and all these spiritual energies come and people don't know how to cleanse their energy anymore. So they're like a bus filled with all sorts of unwanted passengers. Uh, I, there, uh, two, two, two questions very quickly. Uh, one is from a, a super chat uh, from a, a friend of mine, Dayhawk666, also known as Goody Goody Dayhawk, formerly in another life. And he says, <laughs> what do you say to someone like me who doesn't know one's purpose in life and why they are here? Well, yeah, the, the teaching of the prophetic reality is you have to know yourself to know God. So once we take a path in which to know myself means I'm going to reflect inward because everybody's searching for God outside. You know, everyone's running to this place, that place, this uh, assembly, that, that location. But all of those locations should be teaching is that you have to find God inside. And so I'm not on heaven. And I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my believer. So then the spiritual teachers would teach them that wherever you are, every day, sit down and meditate and take an accounting for yourself. Sit down, sort of breathe, meditate and say, what have I done good today? What have I done bad today? Why did I fight today? Why did I get anger today? And you take an accounting of all the actions and you breathe and meditate and trying to find the inner peace. And we have much more detailed practices but this is only for just a, a two minute uh, answer on television. And, and that's the, the whole reality. Once I began to lock into myself, began to breathe then cry at night that why did I bother these people? Why did I yell at this person? Why did I get angry about this thing? And I would write it down and say, okay, I'm going to make tomorrow a better day. Hopefully, inshallah. And then I took a life of continuously trying to make each day a little bit better by getting to know myself. Then I knew my triggers. I knew what I would get angry at, what would, uh, you know, bring out uh, different characteristics. And as a result of reflecting inward and then light practices and, and breathing practices, then you begin to find the inner reality of God, the consciousness, the virtuous character and go out and feed people, go out and do good deeds until the heart became so soft and the heart is like it's like a, a satellite when you clean it and purify it begins to pick up a signal from the divine the presence and begins to to pick up an inner consciousness and my inner voice in reality and that's that becomes then the light at the end of the tunnel and the guidance that guides us towards goodness and hope and the divine the presence but if I'm just going to walk in the market and supermarket, then I don't find anything about myself and, and I don't even know why I'm here. So many people then harm themselves and live a life that's reckless uh -huh. without understanding why they're here. Perhaps the most important thing uh, that we could say at this point would be, uh, Sheikh, could you give everyone listening uh, some instruction on how to meditate? Yeah, inshallah. I think the, the how on, on meditation is, is that to focus on the heart. So you take your thumb because there's a heartbeat from the thumb. So you keep the focus going to be on the heart and the power of the heart and you close your eyes, play something nice, something that for us is like the salawats, Qur'an, something spiritual. If you want classical music, something that brings a, a sense of uh, soothing and relaxing and you visualize yourself in a space of light and that light is in front of you from all six directions is light and that asking God that I'm asking for your light, I'm asking for a connection, I'm asking that you take away difficulties from me and fill me with light and I just start every day one, two, three minutes of just breathing. Breathing and listening to these beautific sounds. And why we don't meditate in silence is as soon as you sit and try to meditate in silence, you begin to hear whisperings about this problem, who did this, who did that, go get a sandwich, go, go, go get your email. And we call the whisperer that doesn't want us to reflect inside. So you play something nice so that you're, you're, you feel that sensation within your heart, something beautific. 
and then visualizing yourself in this ocean of light from all directions and then just breathing and breathing in and out and letting the energy to enter the heart and not for too long that you get sort of tired from it, just a few minutes, few minutes every day until it begins to, to settle in and, and feel an energy and then you also do an accounting. That at night that, what did I do? Did I, what did I do to disturb that energy? Who did I harm with my person and with my tongue? And that way we can also correct our character because just meditating with bad character and repeating the bad action every day also takes away and diminishes the blessings and, and the benefits. So every night I take an accounting that, that who did I disturb, who did I bother with myself, with my character, with my actions and I try to make tomorrow to be a better day. And then just slowly, slowly, slowly meditating and then trying to make that connection. <coughs> Excuse me, the concept of a shaykh that people who, who understood and began to build themselves, the concept of having a guide is that I needed somebody stronger than myself to calibrate me and to accompany me on this journey. Then they seek out their guides, their gurus, the shaykhs so that they can accompany them and not to be lost by myself because my coordinates will tell me this thing but my shaykh's coordinates may be this way that I have to be able to balance what is the shaykh's guidance and what am I thinking and why are they off. Maybe what I'm thinking is very egotistic and the shaykh is thinking more that what I should be doing and how I should be directing myself and then that becomes the reality of guidance and all the teachings and the talks and, and all of the, the activities so that I can coordinate myself to a higher plane. And then the chanting, the breathing is so that I can raise my vibrations. When I begin to raise my vibrations then it becomes a great attack against all the lower vibration and the bad energies that are trying to attach itself to myself. And that's why the mantras and the chantings. So the vibration becomes stronger to push away all the unwanted passengers that my body is, is, is trying to get rid of them and, and, and sort of evict them but they're not leaving. Yeah, Shaykh, is there any particular uh, um, manner of breathing or just normal breathing? No, we have it, it's very in-depth but you, you breathe out and in and, and we have a whole system of, of breathing and chanting through the, the breath through the nose and pushing out and, and breathing, uh, locking the tongue, trying our best to breathe out the negative energy and breathing in the energy and the more that we can restrict most people will start because if, if it's too difficult at, at the beginning and then you slowly, slowly make it a little bit stronger. If you breathe in and out it's okay but it never really becomes powerful but that mm -hmm. you do it at first just to get used to breathing. Once you're used to the concept of meditating and breathing you actually breathe and you breathe the name of the Divine Allah and you breathe in and Allah is the, the name for the Divine for Christians in Arabic countries too. So it's not just specific to Islam but it is the d Divine word for God which we don't have a plural, Allah is not plural. So we don't have God and gods, it's just Allah and Allah. So when you're breathing in with that mantra, you're breathing in that energy. Exhaling and then slowly again breathing in and taking a nice slow deep breath in and you feel the energy of Divine Grace coming in what we call nafasa rahmah, the breath of the merciful. That that breath comes in and that when I'm going to be purging from my breath is all the bad characteristics. So when I'm exhaling from the nose Again the same, I visualize all the bad characteristic going out and when I breathe back in all the positive energies illuminating within the soul and, and inside and at the same time holding my thumb so that the focus of the breath is my heart, the focus of the practice is my heart. And later on we would train you on you know visualizing the oceans of light playing something very beautific and holy for you so that you feel that sort of spiritual sensation. And then asking for the guides to accompany you and to be with you and then you give your, 
your coordinates to God that I want to be with you, I want your divinely grace and protect me from any type of evilness and badness. And then you begin that process every day of breathing and connecting, breathing and connecting so that that light can begin to illuminate the heart. And then good deeds, good deeds and accounting inshaAllah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. That's a beautiful you. teaching and uh, that's, that's, yes, I, I will try this. Thank you. I wanted to say that, that people don't realize we're actually getting an incredible, incredible amount of detailed, specific knowledge that's often kept very private within the Sufi tradition for people that are that are ready to access it. So this is an incredible gift from the Shaykh. Uh, Thank you. Techniques. These are these are not techniques you're going to find in a book anywhere, right? These are techniques that are passed on from spiritual teacher uh, and he's blessed us with sharing this with us. And I wanted to add, you know, when he's using the meditation of Allah, like he said, the word Allah literally means one word interpretation is the God, but it's, it's pre-Islamic word. And you know the the name that Jesus would have used in in Aramaic is Allah. I mean, it's the it's the word the, that's not Islamic. So great rabbis like Maimonides who wrote in Arabic wrote Allah when they wrote their their Jewish tracts, right? And mm. so yeah. understand that when he's giving that name, he's not saying, "Oh, you're you, you're trying to become Muslim by doing this." It's the name of God as the region has used for thousands of years. This is, uh, I think this, I think, Sheik, you answered my uh, my third question. Uh, and I've still got a few super chats of people who wanted to ask. But, well, we but should, my we third... should have with the Sheikh's time. Let's, let's see if we can. I don't want to hold the Sheikh forever. Uh, can, I, can we I'm away? sorry. Yes. No, yeah, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you guys. And I love the company. And uh, uh, very honored that the audience is, is uh, patient and, and patiently enduring everything. And I, I know that it's a different <laughs> culture, different understanding. But, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's nice to eat at a different restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I want to come to Vancouver and, and have that wonderful <laughs> yeah. Rumi tea that the, 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 the Sufi order offers there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, but I, I I will just read these real quick. Yeah. Uh, Vanek yeah. Black Rose uh, with a, a $10 super chat. Thank you, Vanek. Says, I have temporal, paradoxical, astral, projectional dreams uh, astral projection through time. I know it's real because I have a sense of returning upon waking. Uh, what would you say is causing this shake? Thanks. Sure. I think our belief and the prophetic teaching is that uh, every soul at night, you know, there's, we don't die. The soul doesn't die. The body goes to sleep. The soul goes to the divinely presence. And when you wash, there's, we have a ritual washing. And the secret of washing is to take away all negative energies. Imagine in that time the Prophet was teaching the, the people to wash and now the understanding is that there's, there's energy in water, you know, it's an angelic fire. Water in H2O is an angelic fire and it's stable and doesn't burn anyone. If God ever wants it to burn, He takes one H out. <laughs> That's right? Very good, and yes, explosive. yes. So that, that angelic fire is uh, meant to be a blessing for us. When we wash and ritually wash ourselves before we sleep and we used to pray, everybody used to pray before they went to bed. I lie myself to sleep, I pray for you my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray for you my soul to take. Well, all of these had an important benefit because as soon as you pray before you sleep and you go to bed, your soul immediately goes to Divinely Presence uh -huh. under what we call the throne of Rahman. One of the names of the divine, the compassionate, the soul is going. The soul is not going to be occupying the body. The body needs to sleep. The soul is eternal, doesn't sleep. So that will explain many different realities. Once you're on the page that your soul doesn't sleep, so you ritually wash at night, you do your prayer, your soul goes to divine the presence. At that time and tonight, many souls that are listening will say, I heard a lot of things I don't understand or want. I want to be dressed by them. And that's why the Prophet taught that seek out knowledge. So when we listen to these divinely knowledges and divinely teachings, it's a growth for the soul, not for the mind. They don't care if the people's minds didn't understand us because it's not a, an addressing for the mind. The soul understood what I'm talking about. And tonight when people sleep, it will go ask God for those realities. And the soul every night will go into that ocean, 
swim into the ocean of that reality and the souls become more powerful, more powerful. That's why then the process of teaching as well as meditating and all the other aspects of, of the spiritual path is to teach from knowledges that will build the soul. So the souls become like loaded lightning filled with energy because night they're going into these oceans of reality and learning what hasn't been learned before. But if you watch a video on accounting, you can't ask God for the reality of accounting. <laughs> there's, there's no ocean for that. It's just something that illuminated your head for a little bit of time. So you seek out knowledges that are eternal, that benefit the soul. So when I go into that ocean, I'll be dressed by its reality, blessed by its reality. And that's why seeking out a path towards knowledges, it was a divine grace be dressed upon the soul and, and blessed upon the soul. And, and that's what gives people spiritual energy and, and, and power. Knowledge is power. So the material world, they use their knowledge to manipulate countries and people and things. But heavenly knowledge is a, is a power to the soul. The excess Heavenly knowledge is then the knowledges that the shaykh begins to teach because their ships, their souls are like loaded ships of, of lightning and energy. And as a result, the knowledges that are coming from their heart for the benefit of people's souls, inshaAllah. Uh, beautiful. Because I, you know, one of the things that I had uh, sent was a, a question given these darkening times. What can we do to internalize the piece of higher understanding from the mind into the heart where it can lodge and take root, which has been my problem because uh, I have uh, uh, had a, a great uh, hunger for spiritual knowledge and I have studied and I have uh, uh, read and, and worked and reflected uh, on but not had a regular meditation practice. And I think perhaps uh, that might be uh, the way. I mean, if I'm understanding you, Sheikh, uh, that is the way uh, the, the meditation uh, can can convert the awareness of of knowledge uh, into actual manifested physical reality. Well, the the knowledge in which you seek is in the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. we direct ourselves inward. If I'm on the circumference and I'm just reading books, that doesn't take me to the center. So I have mm -hmm. to take a path. So I take one step, God comes 99 steps. So as soon as I take a path to the, the center, the power which is in the heart. So I'm going to meditate. Then I have to have a guide who's a living guide that comes from that center. And one who they died before they died. So they reached the matrix, right? Mm. In their seclusions, they died. God offered them, then come back to the heavens with us. And if they're ready to go, then God says, Well, I don't need you right now, but the earth needs you. Mm -hmm. As a result of what you've achieved, go back now and bring people this way. Ah, uh, kind of the idea in the other tradition of the Buddha, who, uh, or, or not the Bodhisattva. Uh, the Buddha transcends and leaves earth, the Bodhisattva transcends but then comes back to help others. Yeah, it's in all traditions I would imagine that, you know, if you, you, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So the fake gurus are, 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 are read, they, they read and they try to reiterate what people, what they've read. Mm -hmm. But if it's not activated within their soul, then it's like a, in university when the professor would talk, I would sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right because he would right. talk and it it kind of stimulated my head and i would pass out and sleep because i knew he didn't really feel what he was talking about he didn't experience what he was talking about he was giving me theories that he hadn't experienced it was in business school and he hadn't made any money so i said if you read all these books and didn't make money how are you going to make me money <laughs> you know, it's amazing you say that, Sheikh, because I remember that I once encountered uh, so a, a Sufi was telling me that uh, he had at an academic conference, he had met a professor who dedicated his entire career to studying Ibn al-Arabi, one of the greatest Sufi yeah. teachers of all time. And, and then he was shocked at this conference to actually meet a real practicing Sufi for whom this wasn't a theoretical book. He was living his life and saw yeah. the universe in the way that Ibn Al-Arabi described. And he said, wait a minute, 
you actually see the cosmos that way. You live your life that way. He yeah. couldn't process it. That this was just an, Im an imaginary story that he had spent his entire career not processing in his heart. Yeah, because it's a philosophy for them. Yeah. But you have to make it a reality and then the, the sheikh has to be a reality. So it has to be a real sheikh in which um, that's their reality. They, they were yeah. trained in it. They secluded. And as a result, they, they speak from their soul. There's no book that they're going to be picking up and reading to an audience because it's, yeah. it's coming Googled in from their heart. They mean they, you know, access the heart and the, the vibration is coming through. And each one in the audience is hearing what they need to hear. And nobody hears the same understanding because everyone is at a different level and that's what's needed is from a soul to soul when they speak people feel the vibration they get heated from the vibration because they're not speaking from their head and the people who are trying to absorb from their head they don't get it anyways it's the people who are trying to absorb from the heart so yeah if we want to reach to those realities then we have to find those types of guides that are guiding us, you know, and teaching us knowledges that we didn't know and at the same time teaching us now how to open the heart. So there has to be meditation, there has to be contemplation. Otherwise, you're, you're trying to take the knowledge where? Mm -hmm. If you don't meditate and open the heart, you're trying to take the knowledge to hear. And, and God describes those are like the people who are carrying books, you know, they carry thousands of books with them because it's just all learned on the head. Yeah. And then they become mm -hmm. old and they get Alzheimer's. Yeah. Why? <laughs> they burn because out. They put, it's like the donkey they carrying the power on, on the head. Yeah, they, they put too much energy onto the head and the head wasn't meant for that. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the neurons, everything is fried up there. So it wasn't a matter of, of doing that. It was a matter of activating the heart. Yeah. If the heart is lit, it illuminates the head. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole galaxy within us. The heart is the sun. Mm -hmm. So whose sun is lit? If your galaxy has no sun, you can imagine your galaxy is in utter darkness and difficulty. So God gives us a, a little galaxy and then if we manage it correctly and open its reality, He says, now you can be a manager of my galaxy ah. and then opens the cosmos for them. So their spiritual ability is beyond this earth. That God has opened their soul and the reality of their soul for the cosmos, for the heavens. And that's why you say the Ibn Arabi would talk a certain way based on not just the earth confines but the realities of the heavens and, and above the heavens into the heavenly kingdom which is above what we call the Sama. So it, it requires all of those practices to reach to that reality. It's not, not anything to do with the head. As a matter of fact, the first zikr, the first chanting we have is La ilaha illallah. So, la ilaha illallah, up, right, left, up, right, left. So, the mantra is no, la, and the secret of no, mm -hmm. ilaha, there's no divinity, and then illallah into the heart but God. So, okay. there is no divinity but God, but God, but God. So, that to spark the power within the heart. To tell my head also, turn off. Yeah. So it's these not that, no, here, shut it nah, off. Yeah, yeah. To nah, <laughs> yeah. No head, no head. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you use head for your accounting degree, business degrees, right, Mike? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, Mexican Iron know, Man. Something came up, I guess it's Mike's Tajali is in the background, is, is yeah. back there. That's why we're talking about accounting. But you use, you know, your head to go to get your degree. But with that head, you can't find God. And if these teachings and knowledges of, of a spiritual nature start to go to the head, they get lost because your head and, and the, the, the devil and the ego, oh no, it's not like that, it's like this because there's different people occupying, trying to occupy that person. So the ego and, and the negativity are trying to occupy the heart of that person. Spiritual knowledges, they have to be absorbed within the heart and spiritual practices. Uh, so it's very much like John Lennon wrote, uh, turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. Uh, direct yeah. experience rather than mental. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, because well, they, were, they were going to the Maharishi. Mm -hmm. They yes. were going through yeah. these spirituals and also the concept of the fool on the hill. 
-hmm. that the, the shaykh is the, the one who lives above and watches and, and sees all the sort of chaos of the material world. So a lot of these people were trying to sing about their understanding and, and, and what was happening at that time and uh, trying to reach towards some sort of uh, spirituality. I love that. I love that. Uh, we have got uh, just a few more here. Uh, right. SHS Rebels 08, thank you for the uh, the toast or the super sticker there. It's very sweet of yeah. you, SHS Rebels 08. And uh, Kit Kat says, uh, with a five pound super chat, I'm hugely enjoying all this philosophical speculation. Love this program. Uh, thank you, Kit Kat. Thank you very much. Well, well no, I would like to address that. It's a, it, thank you for saying that. But but as, as the Sheikh himself has just said, it's not speculation. That's from the mind. He's talking about experience. He has experienced this. This yes. is his experience. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we don't we don't talk from a philosophy. These are these are you know the experiences of the sheikh and what they see and the dimension that they operate from. Otherwise, uh, they couldn't give guidance on something that they, they don't understand. So the the concept of guidance for them is that that's their life, that's their realm, that's the the, the realm in from which they speak and they teach. Uh, yes, and uh, and that is uh, one of the reasons why we're so uh, fortunate uh, to have you here tonight, uh, telling us these things and sharing with us uh, these thank you, thank these, uh, these these insights. Uh, Nicholas Horton with a three pound super sticker is saying, "How's it going? I think it's going good, Nicholas. But you tell us, are y'all enjoying this? I hope you are because this is a very unique opportunity." And loquacious primate with a ten dollar super chat, thank you, loquacious one says, "Thank you for the wisdom." The Sufi tradition has interesting, unique aspects, but also seems like another path up the same mountain, converging on the same ultimate wisdom, consciousness, and way of being. Uh, well, there are, there are many uh, different uh, 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 approaches, uh, spiritual traditions, but uh, they all uh, do seem to have, a, well, a lot of them have a, have a, a core of uh, uh, similarity, which I think is... is uh, the divine there's a very famous hadith or oral tradition of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and please forgive me sheikh if i'm misquoting it please correct sure, me sure. my understanding of it, the, the 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 hadith is that he said there are as many paths to god as there are the breadths of creation and i hope that was a proper re relaying of it correct very correct mashallah <laughs> very well done cameron very nice. Uh, well when done. You have a teacher there. You can't mess it up. You, you no, no, you were. I know you were. <laughs> we didn't see you sweating though, so that's very good. I'm very proud of you. Uh, and and uh, Mark and Ashmed, uh, thank you for the Duma corn. I think that that is all uh, the the super chats, and I, I know we have uh, prevailed greatly upon your time, Sheikh, and we really, really are very grateful for you taking the time to uh, speak with us and and share your insights with sure. us, and uh, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. God bless you, and uh, I hope to hear from everybody soon. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank and you and so Shikurna. much. Now that I've joined the Tariqa, uh, I'm going to reach out to our friend Yasin because I know from the website you've been working on developing deeper relationships in Los Angeles and in Hollywood. Sure. And I would like to be a bridge for that. I think maybe Allah meant me to at least be one of the people to help you with that. So I'm thank you, thank you, Yasin definitely, definitely. And then Yasin will give you our email and everything and. Our, our contact, live broadcasts, everything, everything. Great. Mike also has all, all the information, everything. Thank you. Thank you for, for having us tonight. Thank you for for, for uh, gracious uh, hosting and, and taking care of us and, and to your audience uh, tolerating us. And, <laughs> and God bless everyone and, and whatever path they're taking, pray for us. And uh, inshallah, we meet again in the world of light. Thank you so um, much, Sheikh Nurjan Miramadi. Uh, it has been a joy and an honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sikh. Thank, Thank you. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.